Hi. Hey. Hi, everyone. Let's get more light in here. Hello, everyone joining either through Facebook or Instagram Live or watching later on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining. We will get started in maybe one minute here, um, but appreciate you all jumping on. Hi, everyone. Good to see folks jumping on. Again, hello to everyone who is watching either on Facebook Live or um, watching later in YouTube land or watching on our YouTube, on our YouTube, on our Instagram channel again. Thank you. Great. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we like to hold these Ask a Developers as kind of like these quick check-ins, um, conversations with our mentors on our platform as a way to kind of pick their brains for a little bit of time. Um, so we'll go ahead and dive in. I am Morgan Boykin, for those who I have not met. Um, I am our volunteer and community coordinator here at SC Codes, and my main role is to connect um, our awesome talent on our platform, um, our software developers, with learners on our platform who are looking to gain skills and support um, and just an extra kind of cheerleader as they go through this SC code journey and ultimately um, journey to becoming software developers as we look to fill the tech pipeline talent talent pipeline in South Carolina. Um, so with us today for another installment of Ask a Developer, which we're so excited to be back with Ask a Developer. It's been a series that has really been loved by our um, SC Codes community. So we have um, Reed Newborn, who is a software developer. Um, I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about his background, but we are so excited to learn more about him. He is a mentor who's been on our platform for a um, better half of the year now um, and yeah. is engaged in helping our learners through the Slack channels and has um, great feedback for us. So thank you so much for joining us for this. And I, yeah, I would love to kind of just dive in. If you could tell us a little bit about your background as a software developer and kind of your trajectory to how you got to where you are now. Yeah. Um, first, thanks for having me. Um, overselling it. Um, I'm just happy, yeah. happy to be happy to be part of this, uh, this community. Um, so um, a bit about my background. Um, I went to the University of South Carolina and in upstate in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Um, I was a horrible student. I was in and out of school for years. I didn't pick a major till the end. I uh, eventually graduated um, by the skin of my teeth. And then I started uh, my career in C Sharp in Greenville at a company people probably don't know. Um, and then I moved uh, into a position that would like satisfy more of my needs as a developer at uh, Upward Sports, which some people may or may not know. Um, and then from there, I made a, a very large jump and I took a job in Chicago and I moved out of state. I went um, to a company called Rally Health. I was there for about three years um, and wanted to move back here when the pandemic started. And so I was able mm -hmm. to make another career move uh, into Credit Karma here in Charlotte, North Carolina and um, super brief stint there. And now I'm a senior software engineer at Carvana. So that's kind of like awesome. the track of how I got here. That is awesome. Um, and so since you have a ton of different experiences, I guess maybe picking from a few of those, could you talk to us a little bit about what your favorite part or most enjoyable part of your work is? Yeah. Um, so across all companies and all positions, um, for me, problem solving is something that is really enjoyable. And I feel like you sort of learn to love it as you become a developer or software engineer. Um, you learn, it's kind of addictive to like have this problem and solve it in like that experience of it being solved is really cool. Um, so that's something that I've really enjoyed. I also enjoy my coworkers. Like you tend mm -hmm. to work, everyone in the industry says like you work with a bunch of smart people. I don't think that's like necessarily true that you work with a bunch of smart people. You just work with a bunch of people who also enjoy problem solving, who also enjoy the same things that you do, I think. Um, but it is super diverse because there are lots of things that people do that I don't do in my industry. Um, so yeah, the coworkers are great though. Everybody's awesome. Um, and then 
Lastly, uh, the combination of building things, fixing things, and learning things. Because once you become a software engineer, you're building something, uh, but then you quickly find that you're always fixing things. And to do both of those, you are always learning things. And so it's mm, like, you don't good. just learn to be a software engineer, and then now you're a software engineer. You learn to be a software engineer, and then you continue to learn about being a software engineer, I think, for the rest of your career. You're going to always be learning that's awesome. I'm going to pin that down. Great, great advice. Um, or insight, rather. That's awesome. Um, and so, as you know, and members um, of our community know, and maybe folks who are watching do not know, we are a platform that um, hosts what we call learners. And so these are students in our community who are taking courses, um, who are working with mentors, who are attending events, and they are gaining skills to become software developers. And so I'm curious as a professional software developer, what is some advice that you would give to folks who are starting on our platform, knowing that some are coming as career changers, some are coming mm -hmm. totally new to coding, some are coming and just right. exploring, is this something that I may be able to do? What advice would you give to those learners? Yeah, well, first thing I would say is that if, if I can do it, you can do it. Um, I, like I said, I wasn't a good student in school. I was not even like good in my field in school. Uh, so it's not like I was this like first of my class kind of thing at all. I had mentors and was in the no, computer that's... science lab the whole time, like people holding my hand to get to finish this stuff. So like, if I can do it, you can do it first of all. Um, but the, the second thing is that, um, learning just takes time and practice. Like, you can't get discouraged because you can't, I don't know, spin up a React app on the first try. It's, it's not going to happen, right? You know, like, I'm a software engineer. I've been doing this for over five years, and I can't do it right every time. You know, it, it just, it takes time. It takes practice. And so don't get discouraged in the platform, and don't try to rush the process. You're not going to mm -hmm. speed your way through to some software engineering position and then do well. You have to, you have to really trust the process. Um, so that's like the biggest thing. The second thing I would say is to like ask us mentors questions, ask for help, um, ask to just talk and engage and network, um, like ask to have coffee digitally on Slack, you know, join the Slack channel and ask for yeah. help. Awesome. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and then the last thing, uh, to kind of reemphasize a bunch of things I've said is that software engineering is a lot of things not working. So mm -hmm. if you want to be a software engineer, you should probably get used to things not working. Like mm -hmm. as a senior software engineer, a lot of my day is writing some code that should work, um, that doesn't and fixing errors until it works. Right. It, it's not like I'm just blindly going through the code, but essentially you're breaking things to add new features or your something is broken. And so you write a test and the test isn't going to pass because it's broken. So now you have to fix it and like make it work. And you just rinse and repeat that a lot. So, yeah, that's awesome. I think that's helpful to hear um, from someone who is in the field that it is not like a, okay, now I'm a software developer and I've, I've got it all figured out. Yeah, yeah Just, for sure. <laughs> that's not realistic and to go to use that mindset as they're going through the courses. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, and so this is actually something I was going to ask later, but we, we touched on a, a bit. Um, you have benefited from having mentors and now are a mentor. And so can you yeah. speak to maybe a specific way that mentorship has, has supported you? Yeah, there are uh, many ways that it has supported me. Um, so I will say that for me, finding a mentor is uh, as much about networking and seeking someone who can give me sound advice for the jobs I'm looking for, for the offers that I might be getting. How do you negotiate those things? Because in our industry, it's very common to negotiate. It's not like you got a job and they're like, okay, here's your contract. Uh, and you say, thank you. A lot of people really do say, um, could you get closer to this or that? I need more of this. It, negotiation is a real part. And I've recently had a lot of mentors help me through that process. Mm -hmm. um, so networking is huge. Um, but uh, another thing is finding out like what you might like, because there are so many facets in software engineering. Like I'm not a front end person. Um, I know a bunch of front end frameworks um, from having seen them, but I don't know if I would take a job as a software engineer doing front end work, um, even though I might be capable, 
without talking to a mentor mm -hmm. because there's so many aspects of your career um, like the company you're joining, the location you might be moving to, um, remote work, is it for you? Things like that. It's pretty, um, there, there's a lot of information that you need to sift through and mentors help you sift through that through their experiences. Um, That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Leaning on a mentor for those prior experiences more so than like, or in addition to like technical skills. That's huge and definitely right. a reason why if you're a learner on our platform you should be connecting with us so that we can connect you with a mentor um yeah, and i'll talk sure. a little bit more about how to do that um later um so kind of going back to you a little bit definitely want to know what are some things that you're seeing in the industry now that is sparking your interest or things that you're passionate about or maybe some things that learners may not know that they should look into if they're thinking about getting into this field sure um so I want to make a plug for backend development and infrastructure. Um, so a lot of people who join these uh, groups like SE codes, they go into JavaScript and front end and it's, it's very popular. I am not a front end developer and uh, I have total respect for everyone who does it. Cause like, I'll, I just never understand CSS. I won't get it. Um, so what I see in the industry is different from what a front end developer in the industry might see. Right. Um, so things I'm seeing uh, is data. Uh, I deal a lot with data. Um, I've been part of a data engineering organization. Um, and data is like gold these days. Um, mm. Data privacy is gold. Um, mm. Machine learning and AI, what you do with that data, how, you know, because there's, there's so much information going around that we really have to leverage these technologies to make decisions and to understand and predict. Um, so like, those are things that I see. Uh, essentially, I work with services that give data back from an API response. And either I'm manipulating that data to store it, or I'm searching that data to retrieve it. That's what I see a lot. Um, but there are so many things like you need to ask the mentors what they see as well, because there's front end, there's back end, full stack, DevOps, there's management, maybe you're not <laughs> a coder, maybe you're a people leader, like, there's so much out there. That's why I really suggest like talk to the other mentors, find something that you might also align with. Um, and don't be afraid to join the Java stuff and the back end <laughs> courses. <clears throat> and there's yeah. mentors on our platform to help with all of that. So yes, yes, again, cannot stress it enough. And I appreciate you making that also <laughs> plug for connecting with a mentor. And we'll say that I, I ask developers this question a lot and I hear a lot about AI. So um, maybe yeah. that is something we need to look into. And don't let that like steer, like scare you away. There's a lot of things like, I, I don't know AI. I don't know anything about AI. Like I get the concept, but I don't use it. I don't leverage it. I don't code in anything right now that handles it. So like, don't think that like, oh, I could never learn AI. Like, mm. absolutely you can. Like a hundred percent, if that's what you want to learn, there are resources out there. Uh, you can, you can learn these things. It just takes time and in practice. <clears throat> great, great advice. Um, and I, I don't think that folks new to anything can hear enough practice. It's not going to be the right the first time. It's a process. Trust it. You know, it's going to be a little yeah. bit messy. I don't think you can hear that enough um, when you're new to something. So thank you for yeah. that. Um, let's see. So I know that you have had some really, really interesting experiences um, in different positions, um, and so each one of those companies, I'm sure, was a little bit different, um, but kind of overall from a hiring perspective, what have you seen as something that has helped you um, stand out or something that's helped you? Obviously, you landed, landed the job. So why, why sure. do you think that that has happened each time? Yeah. Um, so there is no secret sauce that I am <laughs> aware of. Uh, my my five-year experience here is is not special or elite or bad or anything. It's just mine. Mm -hmm. um, my wife says that I'm very persistent. Um, and I, I guess I'd like to give like some examples um, along the way. But for me personally, LinkedIn has been like 99% of the interviews that I've had. Wow. LinkedIn connects me with recruiters, sourcers, um, recruiting agencies, companies, hiring managers, navigating LinkedIn for me is what I do when I'm looking for a job. I've got a ton of connections because I like to connect and 
I actually keep up with people. I'll ask um, my recruiter from uh, Credit Karma. I don't work there anymore. He connected with me. Like they found me on LinkedIn and um, we still keep in touch. And he talks to, you know, like we still talk. Uh, and so like, there's a lot of connections on LinkedIn that I think maybe that helps me stand out. I follow, I just look up how to make your LinkedIn profile cool and I just keep it simple. <laughs> um, and I am persistent. Um, different points of my career have been different levers of like levels of effort. So when we, my wife and I wanted to move to Chicago, uh, we specifically wanted to move to New York. Every night I would scroll, like I would look for jobs on LinkedIn. I would find them in locations. And if there was an easy apply button, I was clicking it. I did not care. I didn't know anything about the company that I, I don't care if I met the requirements. I'm applying hundred percent because I felt it, early in career, it's harder to get an interview than it is to get a job. Right. So just getting an interview was difficult. And I had two years experience, like applying to everyone. Um, and at the end of the day, I don't know how LinkedIn works, but like I would get reached out to from recruiters or from companies that I didn't apply to in that process. And I would interview. Um, and I ended up with like two job offers in two different parts of the country and took one that suited my career aspirations the best. Um, but now it's very different for me on LinkedIn. Um, I get a lot of just, they come to me, you know, like recruiters just message me and say, right. Hey, you know, cause now I do have experience and that's not going to be your case. So like I use LinkedIn, I'm not afraid to talk to recruiters. So they're hired agencies throughout South Carolina, like Robert half find great people. Um, there's another agency I've worked with in the past and they don't care, right? They want to fill seats. That's their job. You want a job. That's your job. So <laughs> you come together and like find a good, yeah. Uh, to, Ms. Tobias there just said, um, yeah. worst thing you can say is they can say is no. Right. Um, and on that note, I've heard like literally hundreds of no's. I've probably heard thousands if you include ghosting, because I did, like I applied to like several hundred jobs to get where I, where I was and you're going to apply and no one's going to look at you. It is not going to change anything, but if you don't apply, your chances are zero anyway. Um, I've been rejected from big companies, small companies, um, Java shops in Spartanburg, uh, you know, rejected from Twitter and Facebook, you know, mm. Disney plus, you know, like I've had all these rejections in my career and like, I think I'm a great fit, but you get rejected. And like, yeah. that is just kind of the game, if you will. Um, and then as you get experience, you get to be more picky and you get to say, no, thank you, uh, Microsoft. That's not something I'd want to do in the, at this time or whatever. Awesome. And yeah, it just, you, you have to apply though. So yeah. Oh, uh, and then bef before we move on, the last thing is resume. I've spoken about this in the Slack channel or in the Slack group. Like, yes. um, the format that I found works for me really well was uh, like, it's like a Google resume. It's called I, uh, the XYZ formula. Um, I accomplished X by doing Y as measured by Z. And I think that helps in a lot of ways. It helps your resume stand out. It helps you um, isolate things that you can measurably point to and say, hey, I built a React app um, that shows pictures of pugs, you know, <laughs> as seen by going to here, right? Like whatever you need to do, like I learned React during this course. Like those are things that you can point to and say you've done, especially when you have no experience. Um, so it, it doesn't have to be, you know, a pug site. It can be, um, like just a GitHub profile, like this is my GitHub. This is some code that you can look at. I sorted strings, you know, by whatever, and you can view the code here. Like that's reasonable stuff to put in your resume. And um, there's a lot of resources out there for getting your resume through HR. That is a ton of great info and I'll <laughs> stop there. No, 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 I'll, I'll stop there. No, it, it's great. And I'll, I'll say that that is why we push um, our learners to join the Slack channel and connect with mentors there because you could literally schedule a time to sit down with Reed and get all of this poured into you and also have him um, look over your resume. So it is and, really this invaluable resource. And you should, because you should practice interviews. Like once you get an interview, you have to practice interviewing. It's a skill on its own because I guarantee you, I don't do anything in my job that I've ever done in an interview um, 
interviews were weird. Uh, and I'd love for you to connect and ask me questions about it. Um, there's a lot of debate in the industry around whether interviews work or not. But, mm. you know, you're, you're going to have to go through an interview to get a job. And it is very weird for me to say, hey, write a recursive Fibonacci function, you know, that returns the Fibonacci value. And you're like, I can do that in my sleep. And you do it. But you didn't tell me what you were doing. And now we're on different pages. It's weird. I don't know. Like, the whole thing is <laughs> kind of crazy. Um, so, yeah, the practicing interviews is something that you're going to have to do. Awesome. And you can do it. You can do it with us and with one of our wonderful Please. mentors. Please do. Um, so that's, again, such great info hearing a little bit about um, what's been your interest, how um, mentoring has shaped you, um, a little bit about what you can do on our platform and some of your experiences as well, um, just in your own career. So I am curious, um, kind of as we wrap up here in our 30 minute segment, what else would you like to share with us? So knowing our learner population, um, knowing the experiences that you've had with us as a mentor so far, and then of course, what you bring to the table as a professional developer, what else would you like to share with the community? Sure. Um, I don't think, uh, as you get into this field, I don't think people talk about rejection enough. Um, you will get rejected. Like, it's just going to happen. Everybody talks about their success story. I did it. I'm a noogler. I got in, right? Like, here's my fang offer. Like, you'll see that as you get into the industry. You'll see it in 100 days of code. There are lots of things that are supposed to be encouraging that comparison can steal your joy from. Your mm -hmm. journey is not their journey. Um, they got rejected 100 times, 1,000 times before they got that offer. Like, it is not about how many times you get rejected. It's about getting the job you want, right? Getting in the field you want. And so if this is something that you really want, you will have to get used to rejection, but then you will, you will get that yes. You just have to be persistent and go for your dream. So I want to like highlight that. Um, but the, yeah, but another thing I want to highlight is that I think this job is a lot of fun. There's a lot of really hard days and you, you go through a problem and you don't know how to figure it out. Um, there are t-shirts about this, like, I hate programming, I hate programming, I hate programming, it works, I love programming, like, <laughs> that's not this. a real thing, you know, like, it's a lot of fun, and then you get to work at companies that, you know, historically have really fun benefits, ping pong tables, and unlimited PTO, and, you know, like, catered lunch, and stuff like that, like, those are perks in the industry that make the industry stand out, and, you know, hopefully you get to experience those, but hopefully you'll also find a company that just dry, like fills that, um, that career aspiration that you have, that fun side of work. Um, I really love what I do. And so even when I have a hard problem, it's all worth it in the end because this is what I love to do. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, and then solving problems is definitely addictive. You want to solve another one because yeah. you know what that feels like. Um, uh, I think the demand in the industry is super high. There's so much demand for software engineers, but that doesn't mean that the barrier of entry is low. Like mm. you do have to learn these skills and then you will have to interview and you, and you will have to get through the hard stuff to still get into the industry. So like, again, don't be discouraged along the way um, because it's, you know, uh, there, there are plenty of jobs out there and, you know, hopefully SE codes in, you know, building this workforce here will bring a lot of those jobs to the area. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are lots of resources to learn from. There's lots of mentors to get help from, get referrals from, find out info about companies, you know, that, that is what SE codes is here for. So, yeah. That's right. Totally true. Um, and, Lastly, I, I like to ask all developers this: um, What is it? Some, what is something that you wish you knew before your first day as a professional software developer? If you could go back, what would you tell yourself? Um, you don't have to know everything going into, and you're not so learning. Um, learning how to build something specifically in the 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 field that you want to be in like if you want to be in front end or you want to be back end learn that thing enough 
to be able to do your job, you know, um, there's a ramp up period, like the first six months, you're not going to be fired because you broke production or because you didn't go like send code to production. Like no one expects you to know everything when you get in the door. And um, there are lots of companies that, you know, uh, when you get in, you've got six months, 12 months to like ramp up and like mm -hmm. learn because you're new. Yeah, um, so the really stress good. of getting into a company is not something that should ever weigh on you. Like, oh, what if they find out that I don't know how to, you know, write a recursive uh, implementation for this problem or something? Like, no one cares. Like, you'll figure it <laughs> out. Like, and if you can't figure it out, that's why you have mentors in your company and that's why you have help. Um, so, like, just do, like, just learn what you can. And as you're learning, go interview. Go interview. And get a job. <laughs> like, yeah. just, find a job and they're they'll take it from there right um so yeah i wish i would have known that because i was so worried about having everything right and perfect before i got in the door or before i did this and i learned very quickly that the more you know the more you know you don't know yeah. and <laughs> yeah that's you know there's a big big world of software engineering and if you're just trying to get a job in it you're not going to be good at it at first you're not going to be great at it at first um, and if you are more power to you, <laughs> because I wasn't. Um, so, yeah. So good. So good. I, I so appreciate um, these types of conversations that can kind of speak to like the human side and the soft skills of, of what this industry is like and, and tapping into those. So thank you again for that. And I will open our floor to any questions or comments from folks watching. And again, if you're watching later on YouTube, um, or Facebook, feel free to submit some questions and I will be happy to throw them into the Slack channel for Reed to answer. Um, but any questions that we have um, from anyone watching and while those come in, if those come in, I will remind you to keep an eye out on our Instagram page and events page where we keep um, or house all of our events coming up. We've got some cool stuff coming from webinars. Um, and some more Ask a Developers, and also just some other ways to interact with with um, SE codes and mentors. So um, feel free to to keep up with us and keep up with Reed, our, our one of our mentors. If you're a learner out there who wants to be connected with him, please reach out to me, and I'm happy to make that connection for you. Awesome. Well, any, anything else you'd like to add to before we sign off? Thank you for this conversation and letting us tap your brain for a little bit. Oh, I, you're totally welcome. I'm super honored and humbled to be here. Um, there are a lot of other mentors in SC Codes. I really encourage you, if you're watching this and you're not in the industry and you're thinking about it, join SC Codes, Please. Uh, get in a program, jump on Slack. I'd love to help. I'm helping out front-end developers. Like, I don't know anything about front-end and I'm helping them with stuff, just like anything I can help with, uh, I would be happy to. Uh, if you want to reach out to me um, on, I guess, Instagram uh, or Facebook or wherever, um, happy to help. Um, and it lear learning code is a lot of fun and doing this every day is something that I love. And so I think that, uh, I think if you're interested, you should give it a try for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much again for coming on and talking with us and you'll live on on our YouTube channel and Facebook. So right. thanks again. And thank you to everyone who is watching. If you have any questions about SC codes, feel free to reach out to me at Morgan at SC codes, as well as go to our website. And I'm happy to connect with you and get you started coding today. Thank you everybody for joining. Thank you. Do I just jump off? Is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Um, so cool to hear your successes and adventures in the field since I last chatted with you. That's awesome. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you, everybody who joined. I see uh, Brandon and Lee, Tobias. Caleb, I know, is on. Leah was on. Thank you guys for jumping on. Appreciate it. All right. Thank Bye. you, guys.